and for our lineups of materials needed to build our candle abra let's go over the colors first up here we have an acrylic silver number 995 and i'll also be using today an acrylic number 999 black I want to show you that plastics that are recyclable make up a very large part of this candelabra. For the base, I had found recycled dishes in the recycled container of our apartment building. I do know that this is a plant saucer that goes underneath the house plant. This is a microwave rice dish, instant, one minute. And this container here is from Burger King, which either held coleslaw or corn. I have five yogurt containers and what makes them so special is we need to have this conical shape that goes down. And then I also found this bottle right here that is very decorative. We can actually add that to our design if we so wish. You'll need to stabilize your candle auger with either some sand for the base or plaster or Paris or some other heavy object that you can put in. You'll be needing a glue gun today and lots of glue sticks, a coat hanger for the main shaft of the candelabra, and these are very important. I got these at a local dollar store for just 80 cents each. Look, boom, they create their own light. They take two AA batteries. An echo blade, a pair of wire cutters, some artistic wire, and some air dry clay. Anything else is in the tutorial. A very important element about designing the candelabra is to know the size of the base. Do you want a wider base like this, or do you want more of a narrower base? But you've got to make sure that you have enough space in there to be able to fill it with a heavy object so it holds down because we're going to be building on this and building out. Now I'm going to be showing you what we're going to be doing. I do like this base because it has that nice flare to it. However, due to the size of our candles today, I have chosen this saucer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our coat hanger. Be careful always with knives and any type of instrument and we have some wire today. What we need to do is we need to bend, like so, our wire, and then put a hole in the base and then drive that up through and stabilize it. So let's do that now. Punching a hole in that was quite easy and I made the angle go to the side. Now by using your hot glue gun, let's start stabilizing this. We're just going to build up a little bit of a, a hold and let that dry. And make sure that the hole at the top is also sealed. Very easy. And once you get that done, it should look just like that. The hot glue is now secure at the bottom and looking like we can stand that up. Hey, look at that. All right, let's now fill the base with something heavy and really make this into a stand. What I got here is Amazon Prime box, right? And I have our stand. I'm just going to poke a hole. Look at that. Went right through. Boom. Into the box and the reason is we want something to stabilize this as we put our um, heavy material in here so you can either use a sandbag if you wanted to put in here we're going to seal this over but i suggest today i'm going to use the plaster method so let's mix up some plaster and put it in there and this part I really wanted to share because I like talking about safety measures. This is Plaster of Paris. Please always read the label of your Plaster of Paris container before mixing or making a Plaster of Paris anywhere. Okay. I'm also going to add some special safety measures here. I have a double barrel mask over here, usually used for spray painting. Uh, if you are more of a safety guy like me or a safety girl, 
um, for that matter of fact, you should be wearing a mask to protect your lungs. Um, microparticles and stuff do exist. And then I also would recommend if you don't have one of these, at least use one of these COVID-19, 94 or higher masks um, just for dust protection. Now, I want to show you this. This is not, not a butter knife, but this is one of the mixing knives that we use. I have so much equipment here in my, my prop making studio. This is a very special mixing bowl. You're going to put the plaster in here and then mix it and then pour it into your mold. You can actually can scrape every last bit of it into the mold or whatever you're using this plaster of Paris for. Uh, if you're wondering where you can get this bowl or this knife, is there art supply stores like Dick Blick carry things like this. Okay, so now that we've gone through the safety measures, oh, and by the way, never, ever, ever pour plaster of Paris down your kitchen sink. You'll be changing the pipes immediately. Fair warning. Thank you so much. Okay, so when mixing plaster of Paris, you want to just put an appropriate amount of water in there to create kind of a sour cream-ish consistency. If you're wondering what's happening right now, the plaster of Paris is heating up, okay? And once you get this mixed, I'm going to be pouring this in sections because I want it to fuse. Now, if you did it all with one big clump okay that wouldn't be too good you want to actually put this up in layers this is part of prop making uh it's like here so this is just layer number one okay we'll just add more I and mean, this was just three scoops of plaster of paris that i put in there with about two tablespoons of water very very nice just smooth that out layer it out okay look how beautifully that goes in there like, just like you're making a cake, you know? Yeah, always wear your masks, protect yourself. Um, I don't have any gloves on at the moment because, as you can see, my fingers are nice and clean and dry. And I've been doing this for years. But if this is your first time, don't be afraid to wear gloves. Always read the warning labels, okay? And there. Okay, now let's let that set, and then we'll do layer number two, three, four, however many it takes. Let this cook and dry. So that was my last pour. That is really heavy. That is a really heavy base. So now let's take a piece of chipboard, create a circle, and hot glue that on there. This base is nice and heavy. So when we build our candle arbor, it's not going anywhere. Take your pencil, put it on some chipboard, create a circle around it. Let's now cut this out and hot glue it to the bottom. So a very important thing with these little yogurt containers is the shape. This is why I had chosen them. If you look very carefully, there's a very special shape to this container. And I was searching for containers that had this. The large top here, and it kind of tapers down. So when we cut this out, we're going to have a case. Okay, so I just made a little cut with an etcho blade. And now I want to stick my scissors in here and very carefully cut. And once we get our little candle holders cut out and in this shape, and they just can be rough like that because we're going to be building on them, we're going to use our air dry clay to create a lip on each of these. So you're going to have to measure out quite a bit of this air dry clay and then apply it around the edge of each of these which we will shape appropriately okay. and that took me but a moment you can see the shape that I had created now we have completed it looks just like it's been made okay so there's the shape of the top of our candle hole and let it dry. There it goes. We have we have now five of them. So now once our cups are dried, I had found this. If you're wondering what this is, it is an ocean spray cranberry lid or cap 
from an Ocean Spray Cranberry bottle. And I thought to myself, that's going to make the perfect size wax drip catcher. And since I only have one of these, what I'm going to do is circle out here five of these caps. And we are going to build with our air dry clay. Five bases, very easy. So now I have my little pieces cut out. I'm just using chipboard over here. I cut these out and I'm going to be hot gluing these little guys down to their new bases. And what else I'm going to use today is air dry clay. And we're going to build up a lip around the base. What I love about hot glue is that it just, it's so instant. It's just boom. So now I'm going back into my air dry clay over here. I'm going to be creating a rim to emulate what we see on the wax. It's going to look like a little mushroom when it's, it's drying this way, you know. So squeeze this down. Very, very easy prop to make. Boom. Took me only, what, about 15 seconds there. Okay, there's one. And we can do this now to the other four. And using today the softy wire, uh, I got it at a art supply store here. You're just going to bend the shape of your arms of the candle arbor. This stuff is very, very soft. And we're going to just shape it to a very particular pattern that I had drawn out here on paper. And then very easily mark and cut them to size. We're going to make four of those. And now I got my handy dandy glue gun warming up. We're going to put on our extensions, our arms on to our main shaft pole here and as you can see it's nice and heavy and at the bottom has been sealed off with the paper so it's really working out So what I have here now is the coleslaw container, which I just cut a line through it and then used a little awl and poked a hole in it. My hot glue gun is still up and running. We're just going to very gently slide this there and pop. Instantly it will go down. So now we have a much shorter space to put the decoration and the air dry clay in there. So let's hot glue this down. And I also have that portion of bottle that I like. So I'm going to add that on there as well. Now I could have gone and just put all this over this before I did the project, but I wanted to see how large that chandelier arm armature was going to be before I assembled this to make sure that these work together quite nicely. So with our glue gun, still hot, let's apply this down. Now once that is dried, now comes the fun part. We are going to use our air dry clay to create the main body of a candelabra. I love working with this material. It's so with this clay. It's just so easy to work with. So let's now shape this down to size. And when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. And on so easily. Now what I've got over here, as you can see, I made a ring up here to hide the wires. And then I have my bowed body part here that goes out. And then I have another ring to replicate or mirror this one. And then I added another ring of clay down here. And what I'm going to use today here is my divot tool. And I want to add divots. I want to add some type of texture to this clay so it looks like it's... And that is going to shape it up quite nicely. 
and I'm going to use the larger divot thing on this side to add even more decoration. Uh, decoration is very essential, so we're going to add that. Continue with the divots. Now you can see how this came out, and all we need to do now is let the clay dry for 24 hours, and then we get to start building it more. And just 24 hours later, our clay is dry. Now I've assembled our candles and our cups because they're ready to be put on their arms. So get out your air-dried clay again and your hot glue gun. Let's assemble this. So our job now today is to put our cups very nicely on each of the four arms and also our top piece over here. And we're also going to be using our air-dried clay to assemble up a smaller cone on the bottom of each of them to keep them stable. Don't be afraid to slap on the old glue. That's going to create a support and we're going to cover it up with the clay a little bit later. Uh, these supports are very important because they're going to hold kind of a heavy candle that has batteries in it. So we want to make sure that there is some support there. So layer it on. Okay, and now let's start adding our clay to the bottom of our pieces here. We're going to start building up a little bit of a cone and just making a support. Don't be afraid to put that on there and just shape it in. That didn't take me very long at all to build those bottom cups on. And now let's let this dry for 24 hours and we're going to then color this black. And this is how absolutely amazing it looked once it was sprayed black. Now you can paint it black with acrylic paint. It would take a little bit of time. But uh, also, as I say, that there's no texture on here. If you wanted something with more texture, uh, then I'd uh, highly subscribe to using the acrylic paint. However, in this case, I sprayed it to give it a nice, shiny effect. So today I am using the silver number 995. I'm also using alpha number 999 black. You can see the ratio is 75 to about 25% here. And what we want to do is we want to contaminate this silver a bit. We just want a tiny bit of... We don't want to use full strength silver. We actually, we want to actually contaminate it, this down. And the reason is we want to have a finish that is candle abra, painting it up by hand this time. And we're going to do the final corrosion wash. I will show you what this will look like when it is finished. My next part of my video, let's do candle transformation today. As you can see, they're just battery operated candles. Nothing special about them would be do. Well, we're going to do something very cool. We're going to make them look like candles. We're going to use our hot glue gun today. We're going to create drips of wax on there. Of course, we're going to turn them around and to create that perfect wax color, beeswax color, I'm using a titanium white number 901 from our previous collection. And today I'm going to be using a drop of 970 pastel enamel. Now, if you don't have this, use any type of yellow and then just add a lot of white to it and that will be equivalent to it. So let's now create illusionary candles. Let's do it there. Now once we completed the top, I'm going to go drop down a little bit. We're going to create drips from here down and a larger amount. Yep, there it is. Go up again, add a little bit more, down, boom. Look at this. Very, very easy. You can create the illusion of dripped wax on your candles over that very lightly okay so we can turn them on when we need to and turn them off okay let's do that to all five. look how awesome our candles came out those drips are perfect now we're going to mix up the perfect beeswax color i'm using 75 percent uh, titanium white number 901 and a dop of 970 pastel enamel. You're going to watch a transformation color. I'm just stroking it down to all the, I'll make sure all your brush strokes are going in the right direction here. 
So it looks like the wax is dripping and let me okay and the grand finale of this now that we've got our candelabra done we are going to do an aging wash on this today the candles came out beautiful i'm going to show you how to create an aging wash if you want to antique any of your props all you're going to need is a small bowl of water using a black number 999 acrylic just a dop. We're going to create a slurry to one to three ratio. I'm using a very large number 18 watercolor brush today. Sopping that up and we are just going to create a slurry. This is very important. If you are a big fan of historical recreations and you watch my my programs, you can always see that I do a lot of these agings and it adds so much to your props. Just apply like this and let it just tarnish and drip down. Don't be afraid to apply the water on there. Let it drip. Go into all the crevices, the cracks. It's going to bring out all the details of your prop. Okay, so now comes the part of the assemblage. Please note that all the candle switches are up, so we're going to hide them. So we're going to turn the switch around so we can't see that. That's going to be the front of the candelabra. So we want to put those candles in directly into the base of each and every one of them. Always start off with the center because you want to start off with balance when you do this. I've got my hot glue gun warming up right now. We're going to apply a generous amount of glue within the chasm and then we're going to put the candle in there. So let's see what it looks like when it's done. 